Hey friends, I'm back and I'm gonna show you how to prep and paint a vintage piece of furniture. As you can see, this dresser has some repairs that I've made to the veneer. And um, that was in my previous video, I showed how you repair chipped or bubbling veneer. And um, so if you wanna check out that previous video, I, and I have another video showing how to repair wooden drawer glides on a vintage dresser. So um, let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is gonna remove the, the vintage poles because I wanna reuse them. So I'm going to use a flat blade screwdriver. The next step is to sand any flat and shiny surfaces using 120 grit sandpaper. I'm using a corner cat sander um, to get into those little corner tight areas. Uh, but the main idea here is you want to rough up the surface, all the flat areas, and give it some tooth because the paint will adhere easier to it. Okay, I want to show a little bit close up what it looks like after I sanded the top with 120 grit. And as you can see, it just looks a little scuffed. Um, I went extra in areas that had like marks or whatever. Okay, so now that I have the dresser kind of scuffed up with, um, with some sanding that I've done, I'm ready to paint. Um, I have wiped down all the excess dust and everything. It's all nice and smooth. The hardware is removed. And the paint I'm going to use is a paint and primer in one, if I can keep it in my hands. And it's Bear Marquee. And I like this paint because it has a really full body. It's a thicker paint, has excellent coverage, and levels really well. So the color I'm using is Peg Blue. Let's see the color, it's like very, very dark, almost black. So I always like painting vintage furniture with a brush rather than a roller. I find um, the finish is more cohesive. I'm able to get in small areas and when it levels and dries, I just think it looks more consistent and it looks better. And I never have to worry about the little bubbles or anything forming with like a foam, foam roller. And so this is a Worcester Pro two inch sash brush. So I'm only gonna dip in about this much to begin with. Spread the paint around and then I'll smooth it out towards the end. So what I'm gonna do when I'm painting a flat area and I want to get even coverage quickly is I'm gonna work in like, using both sides of the brush back and forth and work in, in a circular area rather than just like in, in like strips. And the reason I wanna do that is because when I go in all directions going out, it distributes the paint faster and more even and then I can go back and smooth out the strokes going on all one direction afterward. So I dip in about this much, scrape on off, off on one side, and then I go and I work the paint going back and forth, just distributing it as evenly as possible, as quickly as I can. And then I go back and I smooth out going all one direction. After the first coat is dry, I'm going to go ahead and remove all the drawers so I can paint all the edges on the inside of the um, dresser carcass and on the edges of the drawers. So once you've removed the drawer poles, how you get the drawers out is I just take some flat blade screwdrivers, stick it in either hole and just kind of gently pry them out. The parts of the dresser frame that I want to paint when the drawers are removed is everything that could possibly be exposed when I pull a dresser or the drawer out. So this area, all I go all the way to the edge of where the wood is, this inside portion, all the way here. And then on the drawers, I'm going to paint this, the tops and the sides whatever this little side of the, of the face, of the drawer face. So this, the top and the sides of the drawer face.
Once the dresser is complete, the first coat is completely dry and it's been dried for like at least a couple of hours, um, run your hand along the flat areas and see if you feel any bumpy, like little tiny bumps. And it's normal and it usually is like a little small piece of debris or piece of dust or something that um, got on it when you were painting it and it leaves it feeling like not perfectly smooth. So when you have that on a flat area, the solution that I always do um, after the first coat is I just take 220 grit sandpaper or finer and I just gently sand the surface, just very lightly, just to knock off any of those bumps or raised areas. And it leaves it completely smooth for the final coat. Okay, so I finished painting the dresser. Um, it's actually been curing for a couple of weeks now and I've already put on one coat of the clear protective coating that I'm going to be using um, and I wanted to before I put the second coat on I wanted to kind of demonstrate so you can see what it's supposed to look like uh, look like as you're applying it um, and kind of the technique that is really effective to get a nice smooth even finish once it's dried so what I'm using is Verithane Ultimate polyurethane. It's water-based and it's a matte finish and I'll show you. So there's that. And I'm going to be applying with the same brush that I used to paint the whole dresser. And then, yeah, I'll show you guys what I do. Okay, first thing is I wanna make sure the surface feels really smooth to the touch. So in between coats, it's normal for like a little piece here and there to um, of like debris or something to like dry on it and it to feel just like the slightest bit rough so just like I did in between coats when I was painting it I'm going to lightly sand in between coats for the clear coat as well. Here's what it looks like after just very light sanding you're going to see like it looks a little bit lighter a little worn with the white areas um, and that is normal. Everywhere that you've sanded, it's going to look like that. Okay, I'm just about ready to put the, the second coat of clear coat on the top, but I wanna make sure to stir um, this really well because like the really hardening agents kind of settle to the bottom and I don't want I want it to be uniform so that's why I'm going to stir it so once you have stirred up I'm going to um, I'll just show you so I dip in about that much and I scrape off on one side and I just paint it on and it kind of looks blue when first putting it on Okay, so all this is gonna dry smooth. You're not going to see these little tiny brush marks, any of those little bubbly areas. It's gonna dry clear. As long as it's not thick um, or have drips, like I'll probably fix right there. Um, it's gonna dry beautiful. 